This video is sponsored by Wanderlust. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can take one audio source and record four tracks of completely different decibel levels of audio using the Tascam DR40 and this $12 adapter from Amazon. Hey there, my name is Tyler Harrington and welcome back to my YouTube channel. And if you are a solo filmmaker who does any type of live events, you've probably run into a scenario before where you've had to leave your recorder attached to some sort of a mixer or audio system for to capture audio for a bunch of different speeches. And the problem that you can run into a lot of times is that some of the speakers are really, really loud and really confident on the mic. And some of them may be more timid or be way far backed off the mic or much more quiet. And this can be really difficult to capture good audio for across all these different scenarios because you're either gonna have to set your levels and they're either gonna be way too hot for some people or way too low for others. But I have a solution for you, especially if you have a Tascam recorder that can do dual track recording and recorded safety tracks. It doesn't have to be the Tascam GR40 like I have here today. That's gonna allow you to record four different levels of audio, which will make it almost impossible for you to not have a good audio recording no matter what the speaker sounds like. So in order to do this, all you need is a recorder that has two XLR inputs um, and has the ability to record a safety track. So what a safety track means is that you can set your decibel levels and set your levels for your main track. And it'll also simultaneously record a second safety track at a pad of your choosing. So I normally choose a negative 10 dB pad. So that means that that second track will be 10 decibels lower than your main track. And I'm gonna show you how you set all this up in the menus in just a second here, um, but you need a recorder that has the ability to do that. And then this little adapter here that I got off of Amazon, it is a female XLR into two male XLR. Um, so as long as you have these two things, um, you're good to go. So I'm gonna show you how to set all of this up in the menus right now. All right, so here we have the Tascam DR40, and as you can see down here, I have the XLRs plugged into both of the inputs. The other end is running into my SM7B. So the first thing we need to do is gonna set up the right recording mode. So we hit this button over here on the far right, and then we're gonna change our recording mode to dual. From here, our source, we need to change to external independent. This will give us the ability to give a separate level to the left and the right channels. And then right here is where you can set your pad however quiet you want the secondary recording to be. Once you finish that, you can go back home and we're gonna hit record here to start monitoring our levels. And as you can see, we have four different levels here um, between all of our different tracks. So up here, you can see that we have the left track on the top, the right track on the bottom, and then down here we have the same thing just at a negative 10 dB pad. So if you wanna change these independently, you hit this button here on the far left, and that'll give you the ability to, now you're controlling the left channel. So when you press the input button on the side of the recorder, that is gonna be changing just the left channel. And then if you tap it again, you can now be controlling the right channel. And same thing, you use the input buttons on the left to change the decibels up and down. So what I like to do is I like to set them so that they are far enough apart that the pad and everything is gonna give you a you know four distinctly different audio recordings. So usually I make one channel that's gonna be a little bit too hot for kind of like a normal voice, one that's gonna be pretty much spot on, and then use your, your pads beyond that. So um, as you can see here, I have the right channel set for 80, the left channel set for 60, and then the ones down below here are giving me a pretty good indicator indicator here. So I think this is a pretty safe way of doing it. Again, it's kind of personal preference. You can do it however you want, depending on your situation or your scenario. But as you can see, just with this one input source, we have four very different audio recording levels and we're capturing a huge range of audio. So we've been outsourcing our wedding editing to Wanderlust for years, and it has by far been the best business decision we've ever made. For years, I fought the idea of outsourcing because every company I had found up until that point had either been too expensive to be realistic, or they just didn't meet the quality expectations that I had for my films until we found Wanderlust. Wanderlust was able to edit all of our wedding films at a price that made sense for our price point and at a quality that I was super, super happy with. And the process is super simple. You just choose the type of film you need edited, answer some specific questions about your project, and send over the footage. Everything is managed from a streamlined portal where you can chat with the Wanderlust team with any specific questions you might have, manage your revisions, and so on. Their turnaround times are quick and they've never missed a deadline. If you feel like your editing backlog is holding you back, 
from living your life or growing your business, you need to give Wanderlust a try. Thank you again to Wanderlust for sponsoring today's video. If you wanna save $50 on your first edit with Wanderlust, simply click on the link in the description below and you can try them out to see what it's all about. All right, so there you go. It's that easy to set up. And once you have these four different audio tracks, I suggest using something like Pluralize to sync it with all of your footage. And then you'll have all these different tracks enabled. It isn't necessarily the cleanest setup and doesn't add a lot of uh, bulk to your timeline, but it is by far the safest way to make sure that you're covering your butt when it comes to recording audio for lots of different audio sources. Now this kind of goes without saying, but one thing that this isn't gonna protect you from is this isn't gonna protect you from a really bad signal. So if there's buzz in the signal, or the signal drops out or something like that. This isn't gonna protect you from any of those things when it comes to working with the DJ or a sound person or whatever. Those types of issues are going to show up in these recordings regardless, but this is gonna help you to make sure that you're at least capturing as much dynamic range as possible for those scenarios where you can't be monitoring your audio. If you have any other questions about how to set up the Tascam DR40 in general, I have an entire video that I'll link up here. You could check that out and I'll walk through the entire process and how to set up up the entire recorder from start to finish. So if you just got one of these or you're unfamiliar with this recorder, you wanna learn more about it, definitely go check out that video. All right, and that's, there you guys have it. That's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video and wanna see more just like it, make sure you subscribe down below and give the video a like if it was super, super helpful for you. Until next time, I'm Tyler Harrington. See you then.